So basically, I've been testing out the GH5 with SLR Magic lenses, heavier setups with the Xeon Crane 2, and because I got the Crane 2 and the C200, I thought, you know what? I'll see if I can balance it and see what results I can get. Um, so yeah, I balanced it pretty good, and we are in pan and follow mode, which works out pretty well, because if you have the follow mode on, you don't want it to tilt, because the tilt access doesn't really work that well with the crane because of the, the size and the camera and the weight that it can handle. So obviously you're better off with Ronin's and Steadicam Vestimarns for this kind of setup. But if you already own the crane too and you want to know what it looks like. Okay, so first off, apologies for the terrible, terrible footage. One, it's raining and two, I don't have the camera for very long so I don't have much time to set up any shoots with the gimbal. But as you can see, as much as this gimbal is amazing, the C200 is just one, it's a bit too heavy to do any tilt. And as you can see, it's just too heavy, so you get too much vertical bounce, which is a shame because a single gimbal and the C200 with the autofocus could be a match made in heaven. What I'll do now is for people that have this setup and they want to test it with the C200 or cameras like that, I'll show you how I set up and how I got the best results. So let's check it out. Okay, so as we know, this is your typical kind of setup with the C200. We got the side handle here. We got the monitor bracket that goes on the top. And then obviously your monitor is right here. So that's your typical setup. So to get it on the gimbal, we need to take the monitor off, the top handle off, and the side handle off. But to make sure we're still using the autofocus and the touch screen and things like that, we want the screen, but we don't need the handle and the top handle. So let's take all that off first. Okay, so now everything's off. The top handle's off, monitor bracket's off, and the side handle's off. So we just got the camera and the lens. So now, what we want to do is we want to put it on the gimbal, but the first thing we have to do is we have to detach the monitor from the handle. So we don't need those pieces anymore. But we also need to detach the monitor from this bracket. And you don't have to worry about taking that off because you're not gonna mess up any wiring or anything like that because there's no wiring involved. So it's just this piece here. Now this piece we can put somewhere safe out of the way. Now what's great is we still need the bolt. So keep the bolt with the piece that you just took off. And this piece, lucky enough, has a perfect spot on the crane too, which I'll show you now. So to make this a bit faster for you guys here is I want you to put this axis all the way to the back and this axis all the way down and put this one just about the middle for now. And what you want to do first is attach the monitor first and then the camera um, and then balance it. Don't put the camera on first and then balance it because when you put the monitor on it's just going to set it all off again. So first of all, monitor on the gimbal which lucky enough, as I mentioned, goes right there perfectly. So we have to put the monitor upside down because if we have it upright, it sticks into the camera and it just messes up the balance even more. So we want to go in there. There we go. So the monitor is set up on this part of the gimbal here, which is on that axis, just here, just so you guys know where it is. It's on this part of the gimbal. You set that up. Now we'll put the camera on. Don't worry about balancing it just yet because we need to connect this wire from the monitor. So it just goes into the usual spot. Make sure the arrow is facing up. There we go. Monitor is connected. Everything's right. And there we go. So we're balanced, ready to go. We'll turn it on. Camera's on, monitor is on. We can still access the touch screen when we want to touch focus as we're running around with the gimbal. And as mentioned, keep it in pan and follow because you don't want it to tilt on you. And you need to make sure, just on the side here, that we flip the mirror image because obviously your monitor and your viewing is upside down. So once that's done, you're pretty much golden and ready to go. So basically I got good news and bad news. So if you want the C200 on the Xeon Crane with heavier lenses like the 18 to 35 or the 16 to 35 L series, it's not gonna work. But I took those lenses off and I just put the cap back on the front. Unfortunately, I don't have any pancake style lenses, but this was like a rough test with it. And with no lens on, so tricking it as if there's like a pancake lens on there, it now tilts very well. So which means the vertical bounce would probably be less. So if you had something like the Canon 40mm 2.8 or the cheap 50mm 1.8, 
or the 24 EFS lens, which I'm not sure will work. Unfortunately, I don't have any of those lenses here. Maybe even hire those lenses for the day, see if it works on your C200 with the Crane 2, but unfortunately for my test with these lenses, I'm not really getting good results, so let me know how you guys get on. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it helps some people out, and um, I guess I'll see you guys soon.